Hello, everybody. Welcome to our broadcast today. I'm Pastor Steve Green. Uh, this is Brighton Word of Faith Church. My wife, Penny, and I pastor here. Today is Sunday, December 13th. Our title is The Process and what we're interested in and what the message today is will contribute to is you living in, experiencing, being a living, walking, talking example of the life of God, uh, bringing glory to Him as we spoke about last week. Uh, we are again glad to have you with us. Uh, appreciate you investing your time and your heart in the Word of God, and we will get into it. Um, <clears throat> in Luke 8, 15, it says, But the ones that fell on the good ground are those who, having heard the Word with a noble and good heart, keep it and bear fruit with patience. So our intended result from today's message is that we would all engage in the process of the gospel and produce the results of the gospel. So speaking of the process, this is from an article I read about a week ago. It was written by Peter King. Uh, he's a, a journalist reporting on the National Football League. And uh, he wrote this, uh, No one wants to hear endlessly about the process because it's boring and it doesn't come with magic quick results. It's like what Drew Brees once told me, Drew Brees being um, a quarterback in the NFL and a very successful one nearing the end of his career. Uh, he has uh, produced uh, consistently really good results over a long period of time. So uh, Peter King quotes D Drew Brees uh, as uh, he says what Drew Brees once told me when I asked him about his advice to young quarterbacks. He thought for a minute then answered earnestly in a way the best coaches would truly appreciate. Here's what he said. So much of our league is about results, right? We're in a results driven business, but truly it is about the process. And, and I'll repeat that short sentence again, being, I think, the main sentence in what he said. He's talking about how important results are, and not only in football, but in life, uh, we all value results. Results are extremely important to us, and yet, and he's acknowledging that. It's true in his business, um, but then he makes this statement, but truly, it is about the process. If you focus on the process, the result will take care of itself. Develop your process. Focus on that process. Too many times we get frustrated because the result didn't match up with the process. But if you just focus on the process, eventually you will get to the point where good process will consistently equal good results. And so that was his key. That, that to him would be the advice that he would give to a young quarterback. Now, Jesus also spoke about process. Um, in fact, he gave it a very, very high um, position in what he taught. Uh, let's read a couple of scriptures. Mark 4, verses 10 to 11. But when he was alone, those around him with the twelve asked him about the parable. And he had just finished uh, relating the parable of the sower and the seed. And I think many of us are familiar with that. Uh, and he said to them, uh, To you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but to those who are outside, all things come in parables. So Jesus said, um, the meaning, in talking about the meaning of the parable of the sower and seed, he said, To you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. And so there's something essential about this parable. It is, it uh, communicates uh, when it's understood in very clear, simple terms, what is the mystery of the kingdom of God? He said a couple verses later in verse 13 of Mark 4, and he said to them, Do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? So this is key. This is foundational. This is basic. There's something about this parable that at a very basic level explains um, in a very um, uh, <coughs> revealing way uh, how the kingdom of heaven works. Uh, so then, let's read his uh, explanation of the parable. Uh, now the parable is this. This is Luke uh, 8 verses 11 to 15. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear. Then the devil comes and takes away the word out of their hearts. And so the seed is the word of God. The soil is our hearts 
and the devil is interested in what's going on. He wants to take the Word of God literally out of the hearts of people who have heard the Word. Uh, it says, then the devil comes and takes away the Word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. In verse 13, but the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear, receive the Word with joy, and these have no root, who believe for a while, and in time of temptation, fall away. And so that's, he's speaking of heart conditions. The first heart condition is hard, like a, a pathway in a garden where, that, where it's heavily walked upon. The second type of heart condition he's describing is uh, where there is soil, but it's shallow soil because it's rocky and it doesn't have much depth. And now there's a third type of soil that he speaks of in verse 14. Now the ones that fell among thorns are those who when they have heard go out and are choked with cares, riches, and pleasures of life and bring no fruit to maturity. So three types of soil, the, the hard soil, the rocky soil, and the soil with thorns. What they have in common is that none of them produce fruit to maturity. Fruit comes when the Word of God is sown in the heart of a believer and that seed is properly nurtured to where it grows up and not only produces a mature plant but that mature plant produces fruit in accordance with whatever type of plant it is. In verse 15, but the ones that fell on the good ground are those who, having heard the word with a noble and good heart, keep it and bear fruit with patience. So there's a number of characteristics here to the type of heart that is going to produce fruit when the Word of God is sown into it. It's going to be a noble and good heart uh, noble is translated, as we'll see in other translations, by the word good. So a good, or sorry, not by the word good, by the word honest. Uh, it's an honest and good heart uh, that, that hears the word and keeps it. So there's an inclination toward uh, belief and obedience um, and bears fruit with patience. And patience is the Greek word that we've studied in the past. You'll recall hupomane, uh, referring to uh, patience or endurance or persistence, a very essential characteristic in the kingdom of God and one that um, determines uh, that this is a process. It's not necessarily instant or quick or magic but it is something that unfolds over time. Uh, <clears throat> in the uh, English Standard Version, Luke 8, 15 reads like this, As for that in the good soil, they are those who, hearing the word, hold it fast in, a, in an honest and good heart. So there's the word honest, uh, and bear fruit with patience. So honest would be not just honest about what we're thinking, not just honest about what we're feeling, uh, not even just honest about what we're doing, but honest with the Word of God in particular, honest with what it's saying, honest with um, are we believing it, honest with uh, do our actions demonstrate that we're believing it, how we stack up, where do we stand uh, relative to the Word of God. Not just what, again, not just what I'm thinking or saying or doing, but how what I'm thinking and saying and doing uh, relates to what is, what is written in the Word of God. God. So the process is the development of our heart into a believing heart. Now, when we all come to Christ, it's impossible to come to Christ in the first place without, to some extent, believing in Him. Um, however, uh, there's a, an ongoing process of belief that, that works in our heart, that develops our heart, and causes our heart across a wide spectrum of different life issues to be a truly good and believing heart. Uh, the process is the development of our heart into a believing heart. It is the creation of a good heart. Uh, to understand this, to understand this process, and to participate in this process, is to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. Everything we're in the kingdom works on the basis of this good and honest heart. Uh, our heart develops into a good heart through honesty with the Word of God and through patience or hupo mane. The process produces results. So this is very similar to what that quarterback said. If this was just, you know, a commentary on how things work in the National Football League, it may or may not have any bearing upon us at all. I, I know many of us, if not all of us hearing this recording, are not 
fans of football and so we could easily uh, disregard it except for the fact that what he says about being an NFL quarterback is also what Jesus said about being a Christian is that uh, when we focus on the process and we develop in time a good process then that process will equal good results and that's what we're interested in we're interested in good results uh, that quarterback also said many times people get frustrated when because they're endeavoring to follow a process but their process isn't producing the results they want. Um, and, but, but getting frustrated isn't the key. Getting frustrated doesn't change our results. Um, what works is focusing on developing the process. In Mark 4 and verse 20, but these are the ones sown on good ground, those who hear the word, accept it and bear fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundred. So the consequence, according to Jesus, of having hupomani, of having this patience, working the process, having persistence, having endurance, developing a good process and working it, the result what's going to happen is we're going to get results, some thirty, some sixty, some a hundredfold. So this is then going to be a defining issue in our lives. Do we want to invest in this? Um, many, many years ago, and I've shared this, perhaps you've heard me share this story before, um, there was a prophecy uh, over me. I wasn't pastoring yet, but I was working in the ministry. I was helping a pastor. And uh, a, a particular prophet had a word for me, called me out large, fairly large, um, a church meeting and maybe several hundred people and I was called out and uh, invited to go up to the front and the prophet had a word for me and it went on for some time it was fairly lengthy and uh, he introduced this prophecy by saying to everybody present there this is a non glamour word in other words many of the people there that day might not have been interested although I think many people wanted to get a prophecy that's many people want that they might not have wanted this particular prophecy and so what the prophet said was that uh, I was um, like a sea turtle uh, just you know not moving quickly but uh, you know living for 300 years he said <laughs> and uh, he compared um, me in the kingdom to uh, the tortoise and the hare and uh, I was the tortoise and so the the starting pistol fires and the race starts and the hare uh, bolts out ahead and gets a great big lead and is going much much faster than the the hare and according to the story uh, nevertheless the tortoise ends up winning the race you might think well how uh, can the tortoise win the race well in light of what we're talking about today, if the tortoise is the one who has the time and the patience to uh, work the process, then it's the process that wins the race. It's the process that produces the results. Um, in this prophecy, which again went on for several minutes, um, he compared me to a tree. And again, trees are not glamorous. Um, <clears throat> they're not magic. Uh, the writer of that article said, uh, process does not come. <laughs> no one wants to hear endlessly about the process because it's boring and it doesn't come with magic, quick results. Um, a tree, you could, you could say a tree is boring. It, it doesn't really move anywhere. It doesn't do much. It just it stays planted in the same spot. And But what it does do is it grows and it grows and it grows. And as long as it's alive, it never quits. It keeps adding a ring every year. It gets bigger and and bigger and bigger uh, and so <clears throat> it's not here today and gone tomorrow it's not a shooting star uh, and, and so I was compared to a tree there's a scripture I believe it's in Isaiah that says your days will be like the days of a tree and he the prophet quoted that scripture to me a whole different prophecy a different time same general period of my life the very beginning of ministry in fact this was uh, at my ordination service when I first uh, uh, I had been working full-time in ministry, but this is where um, the, a particular ministry organization accepted me uh, as a person called to the fivefold ministry. And so there was an ordination service. I was being ordained into the ministry. And, and so as part of, part of that service was um, 
the minister who was leading it prayed for me and then in the process of praying for me also had a prophecy for me and in this prophecy I don't recall uh, everything about it but there's one very memorable part and it was because it was so repetitious and what she said was uh, and you'll plow and you'll plow and you'll plow and you'll plow and went on for some length of time just saying that and again it didn't sound very glamorous uh, but it has proven to be true is is that uh, that the focus of my life, the focus of our ministry, is, is to plow, it's to, it's to work, uh, it's to <clears throat> develop the soil, it is to, of the people's hearts, of all of our hearts, it is to work the soil, it is to, is to help the soil become the good and honest uh, heart, the good and honest uh, soil that produces, that truly produces, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. Uh, we're about results and that's why the process is so important. Uh, so the outcome, uh, let, let's read uh, a few scriptures quickly about what God has to say about this process in addition to what we've read in Luke 8.15. And, and these scriptures are going to agree completely with what we did read in Luke 8.15. In Romans 2 verses 5 to 7, and this is a scripture that we've looked at um, in recent times, God who will render to each one according to his deeds eternal life is to those who by patient continuance uh, patient continuance, it's the Greek word hupomani again, uh, in doing good seek for glory, honor, and immortality. So eternal life is to those who use hupomani, who work the process, who, who develop themselves, who develop themselves, develop their heart in what doing good. And so it takes time to develop that. We need to learn the scriptures. We need to uh, repent for when we're not doing the right thing. We need to um, believe in the word. We need to learn how to depend upon and rely upon the strength and power of the Holy Spirit to enable us to to do the Word of God. Praise the Lord. Eternal life is to those with hupomane. Uh, the next scripture is Hebrews 10 and verse 36. He says to that church, uh, the writer says, for you have need of endurance, hupomane, so that after you have done the will of God you may receive the promise. So once again, it's the, the word hupomane being directly connected with results. Not everybody gets results, not everybody gets good results, even those who do get results, uh, Jesus said some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. Uh, we we would like to be those, I would like to be, I know you would like to be ones that produce a lot of good results and there's going to be no way of getting there apart from hupomane, apart from this word that's translated patience, translated endurance, translated persistence. Again, I know I've said it several times, not glamorous words and yet essential words. We read in James chapter 1 verses 2 to 4, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. <laughs> Again, uh, nobody wants to fall into a trial. Uh, if I had my preference, I would not fall into trials. Um, it says in verse 3 though, uh, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience or hupomane, but let this hupomani have its perfect work or complete work that you might be perfect and complete lacking nothing lacking nothing praise the Lord lacking nothing again results are being directly linked uh, to uh, the exercise of hupomani uh, so we, we've read it in uh, <clears throat> in Luke Pardon me, I'm back. We read it in Luke 8:15. Uh, we we read it in Romans chapter 2. We read it in Hebrews 10, and now we've read it again in James chapter 1. This is the fourth time. Is that the results that we're looking for are going to be linked with persistence? Persistence in hearing the word of God. Persistence in 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 remembering it. Persistence in in putting it and and storing it in our heart. Persistence in doing it. Persistence in being honest with the word of God. If 
evaluating ourselves, not not um, looking the other way, not um, neglecting it, not uh, making excuses, not blaming other people, uh, but just stepping up to the plate each day, taking responsibility, understanding what it is I need to be doing, and then uh, applying myself to doing the Word of God. It's a long-term persistence. Let's read our last scripture that's going to link persistence, endurance, uh, patience with results. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 to 11, Peter says, But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, which again is the Greek word hupomane, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if these things are yours and abound, and here's where the results come in, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So it's possible to be barren and unfruitful, but it's also possible to produce great results. For those, for he who lacks these things is short-sighted, even to blindness, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. In verse 11, it finishes, uh, this passage finishes here. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly in the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So the authority that we have been given here, the, um, the anointing, that Pastor Penny and I have, and and what we are constantly uh, communicating and and sharing, and and you could say disseminating, is an anointing for endurance, for hupomane. It is it is something that is a core to who we are and what we're doing. It's a it's a central part of our calling, our ministry. We're authorized to do to do this, meaning we're empowered to do this, and open hearts. Uh, receiving the Word of God will will receive along with it the, this ingredient of hupo money to encourage, to inform, to empower, to motivate. Uh, praise God, it's what we're about. And, and the Holy Spirit works through us in order to uh, impart and to strengthen you in this very thing. To be anointed by God, well, let me read first of all 2 Corinthians 1, 21. Paul is speaking to the church at Corinth. He says, Now he who establishes us with you in Christ, and we have been established with you in Christ here, and has anointed us, is God. And so there is, there was an anointing on Paul, there's an anointing on us. Uh, the, the anointing in the Old Testament always represented authority. And, and so uh, the, uh, the key thought being here is that Paul has been authorized to minister to them. He says, now he who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us or has authorized us is God. Uh, to be anointed by God is to be authorized by God. The authority we have here is to work the process with you. It is to preach it to be motivational and and through the Holy Spirit to empower you uh, in hupo mane. So now, why does it have to take time? Uh, why why can't it be quicker? Why can't we just enjoy instant results? Uh, well, in Second Corinthians, the same letter in which Paul spoke about he who establishes us with you in Christ, it, later in chapter 10, verses 4 to 5, he says this, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So, uh, an issue in the church at Corinth is that the believers, and this no doubt varied from one believer to the next, but the believers had strongholds. These are heart conditions, or I call them unresolved heart issues. Uh, and so they need to be removed. And, and so these strongholds, three things he mentions about them. Number one, he casts down arguments, or in a different translation, imaginations. And 
Number two, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And number three, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So there's these strongholds that need to be dealt with. And, and that's where we uh, find that it's going to take some time because it's a development of the heart. Uh, we come up uh, against unresolved heart issues, which are areas within our heart where we are not yet fruitful, where there is a pre-existing hindrance, uh, where the soil is not yet fertile. It's like plowing into a stump. We hit a personal hard spot. And, and if we're understanding the Bible correctly, everybody has to deal with these issues. There, there are places where the results, uh, where everything slows down because we got to get rid of that stump. There's something that's in the way. We're not predisposed to believe the Word of God in that area. We're predisposed to not believe the Word of God. Now, reasons for unresolved heart issues um, are several. It could be unforgiveness, uh, stubbornness, pride, fear, anxiety, wounds, an area where a person has been wounded in their life and are very protective of their heart, covering their heart, shielding their heart, and in the process shielding their heart from God and from His Word. Um, <clears throat> uh, wounds I mentioned, ungodly desires are mentioned in the scriptures. Um, deception, being deceived in an area. It's a place in our heart where there is uh, refusal to trust, uh, unyielding, just not bending to God, to His will, and to His Word. And now you might think, well, this sounds like uh, a very evil thing. These must be bad people that are like this. Um, but, but, but what Paul is speaking about, uh, or he's speaking to believers. He's speaking to Christians. These are God's best. These are the people who have given their hearts and lives to God. These are people who are followers of Christ. And yet there is uh, an area or areas in their heart that are just less yielding than other areas. Um, <clears throat> and this is again where honesty comes in. We might not want to acknowledge that, that there's areas where we're slow at or we have been unbending in or areas we have been stubborn in. In. But that is precisely the, the way it is uh, with us. And, and, and God's will is that in our lifetime that we would uh, buy it, hupomane, that we would literally cleanse our heart of all such issues. And he uses the story in Hebrews and it back in the book of Numbers uh, of the uh, generation uh, first of all, the wilderness generation that did not take the land, and then the Joshua generation that did take the land, and the land, the land flowing with milk and honey, a promised land that's a believing heart, and the inhabitants of the land that had to be driven out back in the Old Testament, these inhabitants are these strongholds, these difficult spots, these unyielding spots. Uh, and so that's what we're called to do. We're not here to mourn the fact that we... Um, uh, have them, we're here to do something about them. Uh, <clears throat> now these are the ones uh, on this subject of, of having heart areas. Uh, Jesus spoke expressly to this uh, in the parable of the sower and the seed. One of the, there was three types of ground that didn't produce fruit and one of them was the the thorny ground he, about the thorny ground he said now those who are the ones sown among thorns they are the ones who hear the word and the cares of this world is it possible for christians to have cares uh, certainly it is the cares of this world the deceitfulness of riches could that impact uh, the life of a christian for sure and the desires for other things entering in Again, these are all things that are common to humanity. It's not just unbelievers that have these things. Believers, we all need to deal with these things. The desires for other th things entering in, they choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. So, uh, what we're doing is describing not just the biblical truth, but we are describing uh, who we are. It's, this is our... DNA, you could say. It's what we're about. It's what our specialty is. It's where our focus is, our, what we're called to do. That is to assist you in, in cleaning your heart, having your heart cleansed. Again, it's by preaching the Word, preaching it with accuracy, preaching it with boldness, uh, preaching it uh, in a relevant way, applying to the real issues of our life uh, in order to inform 
uh, each listener as to what the will of God is uh, in order to motivate us to do the will of God and to empower us to, to do the will of God. Um, it's a wonderful thing, a wonderful responsibility, a wonderful privilege that we've been given uh, to do this. And so our vision is, as a church, is the life of God. That is not only our vision, it's really the New Testament vision. It is the life of God, it is eternal life, it is abundant life, that we would all enjoy this quality of life, this fruitfulness that is ours in the kingdom of heaven. It is salvation, also known as eternal salvation or salvation of soul. Uh, it is called entering his rest. And all these things are the same thing, different phrases as we've been ministering in recent weeks, describing the same good will that God has for our lives. Uh, to be experienced, uh, all being the same thing, to be experienced in this life that we're now living on earth. We can have salvation here. We can have abundant life here. We can enter his rest here. So it's for this life and it's for eternity. It's for the life to come. And in eternity, we enter into his rest. We experience more fully our salvation. We have eternal life. So that is our vision, is, is seeing all of us move in that direction and, and have the best that God has to offer. Our mission, is then to make disciples, uh, which means that, that we obey Him, which means we keep His commandments, which means we practice righteousness, or in other words, we love other people. That's what divine love, godly love is, is, is all of these things. Because as we, as we um, are doing this, we're the ones that are being the good ground. This is what good ground does. Good ground keeps the Word. That is, that's how it was described by Jesus in Luke chapter 8 and verse 15 is good ground, the good heart keeps the word of God. Uh, and in so doing, produces fruit, glory to God, which is the results, which is the life, which is the salvation, which is the entering his rest. And so a very, so it, it all fits together. In the end, it all becomes very simple. Um, uh, the, the whole Bible is, is well represented by this parable of the sower and the seed. Our purpose as a church is well represented by this parable of the sower and the seed. We're here to, uh, our mission is to be doers of the word, is to have that again, to be informed, to have it preached, to be motivated, to be empowered, to have that anointing that flows in that area, that we would be disciples, that we would, in being disciples, we would have the impact on other people of helping them become disciples, that we would be makers of disciples. This is our mission. And, and we understand that in, in performing this mission, that our vision uh, comes to pass, which is where we're all headed. It's the results that we all desire. And so we are very pleased again to have you to be part of this ministry, to join with us, to be a partner, uh, to be a heartfelt participant. We thank you very much and we thank you for joining us today uh, for this message and we look forward to seeing you soon. Praise the Lord. Have a great day.